Hi, we are here at TM Forum Digital Transformation World 2018. I'm Des Blanchfield and I have the pleasure of being joined on camera by Neil Lilly. Hi Neil, how are you? Good Des, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic in this beautiful environment in Nice in this amazing event. Neil, just briefly before we kick off, uh, could you perhaps just introduce yourself in your role within Ericsson? Sure, I'm uh, head of marketing for analytics and assurance. And this is a global role, yes? That's right. Perfect, so you've got some great insights on what's happening in the world. Uh, before we get into some of that though, I'd like to uh, just table that we've had some exciting news with regard to a consumer lab report that's come out from Ericsson this week. That's right, we have the new consumer lab reports just come out focusing on the digital experience that consumers are having with operators. And of course, you know, some of the news is uh, challenging for operators, right? Consumers are, are frustrated, they find uh, some of their interactions exhausting, and they're finding that a lot of the so-called digital interfaces operators put out are really just a, a reimagining of the old interface, you know, in a uh, impersonal digital fashion without added value. Right. Uh, is it fair to say that the the experience of the tocos and the operators you're working with now is is not so dissimilar to what we're seeing around retail and other service provider market segments? And that is that the consumers are effectively driving this digital disruption requirement, and now telcos are needing to essentially get on par with what the rest of the world's done. That's absolutely right. There's been a lot of innovation in other industries and in social media as well. Consumers have very high expectations about what a digital experience is like. Right. Flexibility, personalization, speed recommendations, all those kinds of things they're expecting and they, they really want to see that ease of use and that personalization with operators now. And I guess there's a lot of demand to, to do essentially what we call self-service, isn't it? And that is that uh, you know, we've gone through, I guess, a, a history uh, and a pedigree of, of sort of interactive voice and web forms and, and even sometimes apps but predominantly you've had to go through a process that somebody else has put in place, whereas consumers now want to follow their own process, their own methodology, and you've got to almost capture all of those various That's right. channels, right? That's right, so you, you have to have personalization and flexibility, you have to be able to do that on any channel and have even continuity of a transaction from one channel to the next, from a handset to a store, to a desktop, to a tablet. Right. And then be able to complete that in each step of the customer journey. Right. right. So we've had focus on the usage experience, uh, maybe not enough focus on the shopping, activation, configuration experience, or even the payment experience. Right. Now I remember reading the uh, the latest version of the mobility report uh, from Ericsson uh, late last year, I think it was November, and there were figures like uh, onboarding one million customers per day, for example, uh, across all your partners and clients. I mean, with that kind of volume, you've got to be very smart about this. And I know you've done a lot of work around using big data and analytics and artificial intelligence, particularly machine learning. Right. What have you, tell us a little bit about the journey that drove that and then kind of what you've been able to put in place and what you've gleaned from that experience. Yeah, so the good news out of, for instance, the Consumer Labs report is that most customers do want their operator to get better. They're not looking right. to, to move on to a new thing. They want them to get better and over half are interested in uh, personalization, in, uh, in um, you know proactive uh, recommendations even yeah. from operators. So uh, in order, to, but you said with those volumes, right, it's mm. going to be tough to do that. And one of the things you got to do is start to employ analytics better. Right. You know, so there's been investment in analytics to get there, but to realize the benefit of analytics, you got to be smart about it. And so, yes, of course, that we're looking at uh, uh, machine intelligence as ways to do that, but also, also looking at the expert-driven approach to validate that and to make that be part of everyday operation and not just a data lab exercise to, to find right. The insights, right? So then, when you have those insights, you can start to offer that personalization, offer the right options to the right customers, right? And you can also look better at the experience. You want it, whether it's the shopping experience, the paying experience, or the using experience. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to measure those, and you want to be able to measure those differently for different customer segments, right? All of that based on using big data properly. Right. So behind the scenes on that, then we're talking about not just massive data, but correlating experience cross domains, mm. right? To get the real insights about how well the service is performing or even how well a uh, transaction experience has been, you need to pull from multiple data sources and intelligently correlate those and then have those uh, machine learning rules applied to that. Right. One of the things that really jumped out at me uh, reading the Consumer Lab report was that, uh, as you said, people don't actually want to churn. They don't have a desire to leave you. They just want more love from you. Right. 
in your world uh, with regard to the use of AI and machine learning, machine intelligence, I, I think there's an interesting and exciting future ahead and that is that a lot of the data that came out of the consumer uh, uh, findings uh, research was that people actually wanted smarter things. They wanted to be able to talk to chatbots. They wanted to, to, to have kind of, you know, when you go online, you've got a book retailer that recommends what other people like you've read. Right. They want that kind of thing where, you know, maybe other people like you are using this data plan or if you right. travel a lot, this is an option you could go right. for or if you've got a security service, you, you could get a low resolution for remote usage and high resolution if there's an incident. Right. But that must be uh, good news uh, in that everything you've put in place now kind of matches exactly what the market's demanding. That's right. So we've seen this for a while and customers even, you know, our customers have been talking about it for a while. So now it's uh, driving this to realization, getting these tools implemented. Mm. And then there's also a process of uh, constant tuning with each operator in each market right. to make sure that the intelligent algorithms are on track for each customer segment in those markets. Three to five years time, I mean, we know telcos have a lot of big sunk costs, a lot of large investment. There's a, a long lead time to implement some of these things, a long tail of getting the ROI. They're needing to now be very agile and nimble and do that foul and foul fast stuff that you now live and breathe every day. Right. Uh, where are the next big trends for telcos to consider? What should they be thinking about when they're going forward and they know they've got this issue, they've got to deal with it. Uh, how do they go about the process of, of going from realization to need to then reaching out to the likes of Ericsson to say, what do we do next? So from my perspective, uh, you know, around gaining the actual insights, actionable insights to, to drive the business, it's start small but with a, uh, an approach that can go broad. Right. right? So start now with the, the biggest problem, the most problematic service, the most important customer group, the newest piece of network, whatever it is, but with a, a strategy that's going to allow to cover all network, to cover all services, to cover all customers over time, and the incremental investment then becomes much more manageable. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for those great insights, both on the Consumer Lab Report yeah. and what you're doing around AI and analytics. And uh, we look forward to seeing what's coming up uh, in the next three to five years uh, from yourself and your team, as well as Ericsson in general. We'll talk about it again next year. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate your time. Okay. And with that, folks, we'll wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. We are here in Nice at TM Forum, Digital Transformation World 2018. Thanks for your time.